welcome to my outdoor studio. Now this is obviously not an ideal situation, but it's my solution because my kids are home from school because of the COVID-19 crisis. So this is my solution to get away from all the noise that is inside. And yes, I'm gonna have changing light and some noise from the creek and the dogs are running around eating sticks, but it's a much more viable option for this time than being inside with all the noise. So I hope you enjoy the scenery of the outdoors and my outdoor studio. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jeremy Gray. I make a bunch of vlogs as well as camera gear reviews. It's what I like to do. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get right into it. So today I want to talk about the new lens that I bought for my Canon EOS M50. And then it's a 22 millimeter prime pancake lens with an aperture of F2. It is a tiny little lens. If you can see it in my hand here, it's puny and I love it. And I've honestly wanted this lens for at least a year now, if not more. What's really attractive to me about this lens is its size. I mean, let's take the lens cap off and the rear cap off. It's literally so puny. It's so, so tiny. And I was really tempted to buy this lens when my kit lens broke last year, but I wound up replacing it with another kit lens because this isn't a replacement for the kit lens. Now, if it was actually 22 millimeters, it probably could be. But what I mean by that is that this is a 22 millimeter lens, but the Canon EOS M50 has an APS-C crop sensor. So when you put this lens on, even though it's native, you're gonna get a crop and it's gonna make it effectively a 35 millimeter lens. And that's an awesome focal length, but it's not perfect for stuff like selfie vlogging. And we'll get more into that. I personally always really wanted a nice 35 millimeter prime lens with a fast aperture, but I just never had it because I always had 35 millimeter focal length covered with my other lenses. I had a 28 to 70, a 24 to 70 after that. I have a 16 to 35 but they're all f4 or f2.8 and obviously the f2 is nothing like 35 f1.4s or 1.8s but f2 is so much brighter than like 3.5 or 4 or even f2.8 f2 is very bright and you get a nice shallow depth of field with that now brand new this lens can get a little pricey which is another thing that took me a while to buy it because i wanted to invest my money in other places as far as my gear went but i found a really good deal on ebay and i really just couldn't resist and I unfortunately sold my 50 millimeter prime lens with the Comlight adapter with it for the M50 because honestly, folks, I did not use that lens almost ever. I raved about it in my review. It is awesome if that's what you need. But for me personally, I didn't need that because on the crop sensor, it becomes 80 millimeters, which is phenomenal for portraits. So if the M50 is your only camera or it's your main system, like the M system, then it's a great choice. But I do have a kit specifically for photography. I'm a photographer first and a videographer and a vlogger second, whatever term you wanna use. And I have an 85 mil lens for my Nikon D750 as well as a 50 mil lens and a bunch of other lenses. And I just didn't need that lens because it's great for portraits, but I'm not really shooting portraits with the M50. I'm using it for video. So I'm not saying to regret your purchase if you purchased that lens. I just over time noticed that I wasn't using it like I thought I would and I'd much rather use my Nikon for portraits and my Canon for video. So anyway, as I was saying... Hey! What? Hey, you! Me? Yeah, 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 ooh, yeah. Hey, hey man, are you sponsored by Canon? No, this video is not sponsored by Canon. I just really like their product and I like this little lens, so I'm gonna tell my viewers about it. No, I'm just like, you're talking really highly of their products, so I figured you're probably sponsored. I guess I should probably let them know that this video is not sponsored by Canon. I bought this lens with my own money, and I just want to tell you all the good things about it. Now, can you get out of my yard? Wait, why are you even in my yard? This is my property. Get out of here. Oh, I, I don't know, but can I stay for dinner? I'm really hungry. No, you can't stay for dinner. Please. Uh, fine, you can stay for dinner, but then you're going. <sighs> Thank you, thanks. Now that being said, I want to get into the size of this thing one more time. I'm going to compare it to the ESM50 kit lens. I have my broken one here, like I mentioned earlier, and it's broken. So the barrel is out, so this is not fully compact as it could be, but regardless, this is how big it would be while it's on your camera. So let's take the caps off the 22. Look at that. That is a, that is a pretty remarkable difference, honestly. Like, it's, it's smaller. It's, just, it's the size of the barrel, essentially. You gotta figure, you're gonna lose that metal mount when it mounts to the camera, and it's the size of the kit lens's barrel and when it's extended. So that is pretty, that's pretty small. Now, even though it is smaller than the kit lens, this lens still does weigh 102 grams, which is honestly insanely light. It's like 0 0.23 pounds or something. And the kit lens weighs 130 grams, 
So a 28 gram difference, but the package is so much smaller that it really doesn't bother me. It doesn't feel heavy. I mean, the system's not heavy to begin with. This lens feels like a, like a feather, the, the kit lens. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about this. So let's get into some of the reasons why I wanted this lens so badly in the first place. Now, aside from its size and its weight, which are huge factors into it, I love the 35 millimeter focal length, like I said. And with the F2, you get some nice background blur, and you can also get really close to your subjects but also you can pull back and get a lot of the scene while not being too far away. I plan to use this lens for a lot of projects and pretty much almost anything that isn't selfie vlogging while I'm holding a gorilla pod or whatever trying to vlog because it is a little too close for that in my opinion and in most people's opinions. Another key thing I want to point out is that the kit lens at 22 millimeters becomes f4 and that's double f2 and it's honestly a huge difference. So you're not gonna get that same look. This is much better for low light. And I really wanted a lens that could perform as the sun was going down and at night. And if I wanted to go around and get some night shots on the streets, this lens just did not cut it because of the 3.5 maximum aperture. It was not bright enough for nighttime and I'd have to stay at 15 mil, which is around 22 millimeters to get that aperture. If I wanted to go to something like 22 mil to get that 35 millimeter look, it becomes f4 and it's just not bright enough. So I really wanted something I could use as it got darker or early in the morning, anything along those lines. For anybody curious, this takes a 43 millimeter filter thread size that goes on the front of the camera. Now that is different than the kit lens. The kit lens is a 49, so you cannot share filters. So I did have to buy a new variable ND filter for this lens, but I don't mind that much because then that's also gonna stop me from switching back and forth when I'm out shooting. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Plus the filters for these small lenses are relatively cheap. They're not like the 77 millimeter threads for the bigger lenses. They're much cheaper. So that didn't bother me that much, but just so you know, it is a 43 millimeter thread, not 49. Keep that in mind. And for anybody that doesn't know what a variable neutral density filter is, I do have a whole video on that on my channel. You feel free to check that out. I go over what it does. I show some samples. I use it with and without at the same camera settings and it can really help your footage. Another thing to note is that this is an STM lens by Canon. And essentially what that means is that it has a very silent focusing motor while you're focusing. And that really helps with video because you won't hear it, you know, shifting the focus around if you have autofocus on. So it's a really nice little feature packed into this tiny little package. So you might be wondering who is this lens for? I think this lens is for anybody using the Canon M line of cameras and M system that wants to up their photo and their video game. This would be a great second lens for your kit if you have the kit lens already. This would be a great lens that if you were traveling and you want to have such a light little camera, that you just need this. I know people who have traveled the world with just a 35 millimeter lens, which is technically what this is. If you had this on the M50 and you were just taking photos, I mean, some video too, but if you weren't like a vlogger, this would probably be the, a really nice little kit to carry with you if you wanted to travel super duper light. Now again, these are all first impressions. I don't have hard evidence yet. These are just from what I've seen online and the small stuff I've done so far with it over the last couple of days. I love it so far and we're gonna put it through the works even more today. So we could stand here all day and talk about my opinions and specs and whatever else about this lens, but I know what everyone wants to see is probably some sample footage to see what this lens is actually capable of and not just what I'm telling you or what else you've read on the internet. So let's get this 22 millimeter mounted on the Canon ESM50 and get some test shots. Let's do it. So that wraps up today's video on the Canon 22mm f2 lens for the EOS M series of cameras. I really enjoyed shooting this video, this lens was really fun to shoot with and from what I saw in the back of the camera, everything looked really really nice. Now I need to go into the computer now and edit to see what it really looks like, but I'm hoping it's going to turn out how I think it is. And to end off the video in the right way, I am using the 22mm mounted on the camera right now, handheld though. So for most people's taste as you can see, I'm looking at my screen. 
it is very, very close, but I wouldn't say it's impossible to vlog with just this lens. It just really depends what you're going for in your videos and how light you want to travel. So I don't think it's impossible. And to show you a difference, I have a Gorillapod attached, so I'm going to grab that now and give myself a little more reach. And this looks pretty great in my personal opinion. Now keep in mind the microphone is now even further away from me because this is a pretty long stretch I'm doing with my arm fully extended with the Gorillapod. So let me know down in the comments how the sound is with the mic further away. But just at first glance, this doesn't seem so far-fetched to vlog with by itself. Now, it's not going to be for everyone. I don't know if it's for me. I'm definitely going to explore it a little bit more because I don't need the, a super, super wide 15 millimeter perspective. This is kind of okay for me, but I want to thank you all for watching. 